sun and give thanks for today and for our creation. We died, you can know the mind which we died. Wabanagi Peach, we died, you can know the mind which we died. There was a lot of things that I did upcome with my battle, mm -hmm. my battle from poverty. I have battled cotton, alcohol, drugs, gas sniffing. I was in rehab when I was 12 years old. That's a little baby. And the only way I knew I had a bad problem is when I was in school, I was sitting there had my bottle of pop sniffing it and I didn't even realize. You know, that's uh, the battles that I came from. The day my life changed is the day when I met my husband. I met Bridget actually, I was working in Escasoni in her community. I was doing a job there, training some security personnel, and I was teaching a martial arts class. And Bridget just happened to show up for an exercise class. I wanted to change my life, I wanted to change my surroundings, I wanted to change everything about myself inside and out. When I seen her, she was just coming shortly after quitting smoking, and she was still concerned about her fitness. She asked me if I would train her to become a fighter, and one of the uh, issues I had, well, I said, well, you already quit smoking. I said, and if, you, if you're really serious about this, you can't, you can't do drugs and alcohol because I won't tolerate it. So she stopped cold turkey, you know, and uh, went through a lot of withdrawals and went through a lot of, a lot of tough times g going through that. She eventually got involved in the uh, kickboxing class and training and told me how much she wanted to learn to fight. So uh, <clears throat> I, I, I seen the spirit in her that she wanted to get involved. So I set a schedule up that I would train her and she could come in to train with my people. And then now I was able to go out on my own and to be able to do what the sport that I like. And uh, it was kickboxing at first, but then my passion and the art for boxing is was where my heart is. And after a year, we became very close because we spent so much time together and going on seminars and training together that uh, we, we eventually became a couple, which made life much easier for both of us. We moved to Halifax and uh, with her family's blessings. Um, and we set up camp here in Bedford. Wow, look at all the flowers out here, Brian so that she could train with one of the very famous trainers here, a gentleman by the name of Tom McCluskey, who had trained many, many world champions and over the years. Tom McCluskey, he was the most uh, toughest man around in Halifax, PEI. Tough in the heart, tough on the mind, tough trainer, tough everything. If anybody would mention Tom McCluskey, they would say, my God, that man, he was a tough man. So with that in mind, we went and visited Tom, and he met Bridget, loved her, loved what she represented, and he took her on, and he, he trained her continuously. She wants to get in the ring and put on a good show, and, and that's what she can, she can shoot for that, because that's her goal. Left hook, left hook, yeah. Do the same on the other side. When uh, she had her first fight in Sydney, there was 300 of her family members that came to see the fight card and the pride that they had just to see from where she came from to coming back to the community and making her debut there. I just love it. I love every single thing about it. I love the hard work. I love feeling dizzy and knowing I have to keep on working and not quit. That's what I like about boxing. I see you looking really good, right? I want right hand, hook, right hand, all day. It was a big event, and uh, when she won the fight, 
the old man was crying, Tom was crying, and he said, you know, Jimmy, he said, this was the biggest fight of my life. I would think that that's really what's helped her, the mentoring and, and us giving her something to keep her distracted from self-destruction, right? And in the early, early years, she was in a self-destruction mode. And because everything is weighing down on you when you're, when you're depressed and you have these depressive chemicals in your, in your mind and in your body, you know, when you're dyslexic and you, and you, have, a, you have a depression on, that's in your body. Um, it's very, very difficult for you to achieve because you got this dark shadows over here telling you you're no good, you can't do this, you know, you can't do that, and you can't achieve, you're nothing, you're worthless, you're all, all these things happen at the same time, and then, and then her wanting something different, you know, wanting to get out, and she found an avenue. She found an avenue first through me. She's a person that's trying to get through life the best way she knows how, and she wants to do this, and it won't be the first time that some girl went into sports of some kind and came out with a good reputation or came out with a good, good, uh, with a, a good um, outlook ahead of herself, and, and she's respected. That's good. That's better than going around the street drunk or using dope or something. Get there.